not high bio. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> um, um, good morning, guys. Today I'll tell you one real story. <coughs> uh, before I start, I'd like to uh, warn everyone that gaining access to any IT system without permission is illegal in most countries. I'd also inform everyone here, including YouTube viewers, um, uh, that story, that this story is not a hacking manual. Uh, this presentation is not uh, to show you how easily you can hack a microtech network. I would say um, that a properly configured, uh, that properly configured microtech network is unhackable. Uh, so, uh, so the goal of this presentation is to show you how to improve the performance and security of your microtech network. Um, and this presentation would be interesting for everyone. Uh, if, you, if you are new to microtech products and not experienced enough, you will get lots of new useful information and tricks. Pick up your notepads and get ready to write down your questions. I'll try to answer them all after the presentation is finished. If you are already a Microtech certified engineer uh, and have uh, more than uh, two certificates, you will enjoy the jokes and drama that I mixed inside this story. Are there any certified Microtech engineers here? Only one, two, three, four? Any trainers here? No? Okay, uh, one. Cool, thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, let me, uh, please let me know if my speech is unclear, fast, uh, and so on. Uh, this is my first uh, English public speech. I'm a little bit worried, nervous, and that's, I'll try to relax. Okay. So a few words about uh, me, your speaker. I come from Russia, Moscow. I know Ngai in Vietnamese. I have been traveling around Asia already for more than one year. I stopped in Vietnam because I love your beautiful country, culture, and your climate. I love kite surfing, and because of uh, that, I plan to stay in Muine until April. Uh, my, my, critique ne uh, my critique network engineering is my primary uh, freelance business. Because of uh, deep microtic, uh, uh, because of my deep microtic uh, knowledge, uh, my office is traveling uh, with me inside my backpack. VPN and remote access allows me to travel around Asia while earning money for guys who need stable, high performance, and hacker-proof network infrastructure. I took microtic courses in Moscow in 2016 and got five certificates. Uh, also, also, um, also, I'm listed on official Microtech uh, consultant in Russia uh, on Microtech.com website in, in consultant section. In 2017, I launched my own freelance outsourcing business, Microtech Pro, in Russia. But right now, I'm slowly making my business offer worldwide. I'm now working exclusively with Microtech only. Router.js is my second language after Russian. It's even better than my English. Basically, my <laughs> uh, basically my short business offer is printed on the screen. You can make a picture of this slide if you find it interesting for your business. We can earn money, more money, guys. All right, here are my contacts. Sorry, I didn't list my phone number because I keep changing my SIM card and IP address because of traveling. WhatsApp is also connected to SIM card and constantly changing. But, always, uh, but I'm always online for you. Feel free to contact me through listed contacts. Being online 24-7, 365 is my business. Enough spamming, let's start the story. Relax and have some fun. I'd like to mention my privacy statement. The country, the exact location, and other disclosure details I'll keep in secret. I guess no need to explain why.
Okay. A group of IT friends and I had a road trip to the seaside for beer, sun, and fun while summer vacation. We rented a private house somewhere remote from the main tourist area. We like beers, girls, karaoke, and loud music parties. So uh, you know what I mean, right? The owner of the house promised me internet connectivity when I confirmed the booking. Lol. He thinks that 2G is internet. It's not the internet, it's a bullshit. 2G is not an internet, mister. I'm not joking, they don't have any internet connectivity. Fiber is not available, 3G is not available. Uh, 4G is also not available. We are offline. Mama, we are offline. I cannot Skype you. IT guys cannot stay offline. I told you in the very beginning of my presentation that I must be online 24-7, 365. We need to get back online as soon as possible, so let's look around. We need to find any solution to get back online. The house is already booked and paid, so we cannot cancel it. So we started a slow 2G Googling journey while finished one case of beer. Found a country clubhouse just a few kilometers from our house uh, with Wi-Fi availability. Ha! Hope their Wi-Fi is better than 2G. Uh, let's go and check uh, what they've got. My mama is still waiting for my Skype video call. Uh, we visited a restaurant. Uh, you know, you come to a restaurant, you always ask to Wi-Fi. It's quite normal nowadays. Do you have a, wi a good Wi-Fi here? I'd like to check my mail and uh, make a call to my mama. Skype call to my mama. We ordered a bottle of mineral water and got their Wi-Fi password. Let's check the connectivity. Not bad. You see? Four megabit per second, mama. It's not a 2G. We have 12 millisecond ping. I will show you the previous slide. It's not a 4G. It's even better. But jitter, 100 milliseconds. Something wrong, probably. But it's faster than 4G, definitely. We online. I tried to make a Skype call, but the connectivity, the, the connection quality was very bad. Always freezing and reconnecting, very annoying. Let's try if they have, if they use Microtik here. I always check it. Bad habit. Launch win box. No. Uh, and also, the IRP shows uh, the MAC uh, gateway of the D-Link uh, router. That's why they have so shitty Wi-Fi here, probably. We are, off we are not offline, can order more beer and return home for some offline party. Next morning, Mama, our house is still offline. Who knows? Microtik SXT Light 2? Microtik SXT Light 2 is a directional high gain 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi Fi antenna. I always keep it in my backpack while traveling. Also, Microtik uh, Map Light, the small matchbox size router or table that, keep, that can be powered uh, via power bank. Very handy. Why not? Four kilometers is uh, is not uh, so far away. Let's try to get the signal, and we are connected. So you can see the signal. Is it is it is it enough big? We have uh, the signal uh, was only single chain. So if you see here, only single chain, not dual chain. And uh, the CCQ is here, but the signal strength is very poor. 
four kilometer. The wire, uh, so, but the wireless connection was very unstable. Uh, the wireless uh, link uh, was jumping between 24 and 1 megabit, always dropping and trying to reconnect. Are there, uh, are there any certified wireless engineers here? No? One? Only one? Two? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, who knows what we did next? I ex I'll explain you here a bit of theory from the Microtech wireless engineering course. Uh, by the way, the Microtech rotor is constantly trying to keep the maximum allowed rate for data transmission. In radio engineering terms, we can say uh, that the wireless interface is trying to keep the highest modulation first and reducing it, it detects a high data loss. In our case, we have a very low and unclear signal, so better disable all unnecessary wireless modulations. So we untick all these unnecessary boxes. To, so this is basic rates. And this is the this is for in initial communication between uh, access point and and station, and this is the data, data traffic rates. So we untick all high gain B still keep maximum, but uh, G all rates disable to keep the six megabit maximum for then the router will not try to establish higher uh, higher modulation. Basically, the manual configuring rates we only allow. Yeah, so I already explained that. We want slower but stable connection. Everyone with me? Yes, we did it. After adjusting wireless rate, we got far more stable wireless link. It didn't drop connection anymore. Uh, cool, we have free one megabit internet at home. Uh, and ping uh, is 500 millisecond, is not good for Skyping, but we can now order more beer online. I mean, no need to drink beer at the same rate as ordering beer via why we are to G connection. So let's summarize my presentation. We used a very cheap Microtik SXT light device with strong directional antenna to catch the signal from four kilometer distance. We used advanced Microtik wireless engineering skills to get a very stable wireless link without reconnects. We easily hacked the remote Wi-Fi system and got free one megabit internet connection. Guys, thanks for watching. Now it's time for your questions, guys. Can anyone bring me some beer, please? With ice, better? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm joking. I'll drink beer with all of you guys in the evening. <coughs> so, okay, let's proceed to next slide. It was my joke. Um, now I'm serious, no more jokes. Let's continue to the story. Did you remember the signal strength minus 91 by, my by, by uh, minus 85 was very weak, not enough to establish uh, high radio modulations? Micro QR2 is a game changer. Does anyone know this device? Have you ever tried? One, two, three? Four? Wow, okay. Okay, I'll explain a little bit about this machine. I call it instant wireless chicken fryer. I will explain you why. I ordered the Microtik QR2 VX Plus delivery. Why not? Let's have a look at, well, let's have a quick look at specification. Maximum transmit power is 35 versus 27 dBm. It means 500 milliwatt versus 3,200 milliwatt, more than six times stronger. 
The another thing is antenna gain, 17 dBi versus 10 dBi. And uh, the last thing is the beam width, 22, very narrow, versus 60 degree, very wide. Good to focus the wireless signal. Please use, with, use this with caution. Keep away from small kids who know uh, who knows your admin passwords. We focused our new micro TQRT on the restaurant. Here we go. Signal is much better now. Can you see? I, uh, I zoomed the slide. So now we have uh, minus 81 by minus 77. CCQ is now even better, 88 uh, by 86%. So it, it constantly changing. I made a screenshot. Uh, who knows uh, about CCQ, wireless CCQ? One, two. Wow, well, nice. <laughs> okay, I'll explain you a little bit. Uh, clean connection quality, CCQ is a value in percent uh, that shows how efficiently uh, the bandwidth is used regarding the theoretical maximum available bandwidth. Simply put, CCQ shows the percentage of successfully transmitted radio frames between the access point and the station. So CCQ uh, 88 is already a very good value. Now we can establish higher modulated wireless links, and because of that, we got now 24 megabit. Quite, quite good. So you see on the slide 24 by 24. Speed test shows already 2 megabit. Uh, we had only 1 megabit with SXT LTE, but pings to the gateway were very unstable with high packet loss. Hey, what's going on? We established 24 megabit wireless speed. CCQ is not bad, but speed test shows only 1 to 2 megabit. It must be faster. We ordered QRT because of that. It's an expensive device. Did you remember when I tried to make a Skype call, but the, connectivity, but the connection quality was very bad? It was always freezing and reconnecting even inside the restaurant. 100 megabit jitter, I remind you, uh, with 12 millisecond pin, something wrong with the wireless, most likely. Hurry up, guys. Mama is still waiting for my Skype call. She's getting worried. Okay, we ordered some more beer. Let's see what's going on under the hood. Uh, we use a QRT, a wireless scanner, to scan the air. Wow, can you see that? What a great wireless discovery. They also have love, they also love micro ticks. So if you see here, R means router board, A means access point, P means private. And here we can see radio names, and here we can even see a um, firmware version. So we found uh, five rotor board access points with same SSID. All access points are using the same channel number one. Not bad. Who knows? How bad is it? Yeah, it's a nightmare, okay. Uh, none of all access point using uh, a wireless N standard. Why? Don't know. Signal range is minus uh, 94 to minus 78. Looks like we connected to the nearest one. On firmware, uh, you see 636. And that's okay, not so old yet. At least should support uh, N standard. Why they are utilizing uh, channel one? 
Maybe all the access points were in wireless repeater mode, I don't know. Sometimes if you want to use a Wi-Fi access point as a repeater, uh, you have to use the same same channel. So let's let's see what's going on. Uh, and also, <coughs> do you know that wireless repeating is only uh, yeah I, I said that uh, it's only uh, all only available on same channels and cut the repeated bandwidth by half. So if you have fifty. 54 megabit wireless link and you repeat this uh, access point by another access point, you will have the double cut wireless performance. Because uh, the only one device can, at the same time, can be on a in the air, can transmit data. And also wireless repeating mode increases the channel interference. Very famous in Vietnam, I noticed. Interference is the biggest issue of Vietnamese Wi-Fi. I will explain you later my discoveries. What of all? Yeah. All I so let's bridge our QRT Ethernet and wireless interface so we can join the target Wi-Fi segment from our laptop. We know already the Wi-Fi password, so we can connect uh, our QRT. Uh, yeah, we already uh, connected, so I forgot to say. Uh, so we can, if we bridge our laptop, so there is this device has one Ethernet port and one wireless interface, so we can bridge them together. We know this device is MicroTIC. We can try to build the bridge from our, our laptop to the connected device. <coughs> well done, we got the IP address from the target router DHCP, our QRT in wireless bridge for the target Wi-Fi network segment now. Okay, well next will be a little bit harder for if somebody is not is something unclear, you can stop me and ask question. I will answer and we continue because yeah, I see not so much certified guys here. I'll try to speak easier. Launching the win box, there are no microtech devices listed, only our QRT2. So this is the screen from our laptop. You can see we scanned neighbors, see all microtech devices inside our segment. This is the IP address router. Yeah, we didn't set up any IP address. We got the uh, IP from the HCP for our laptop. And this is the board name we can read, firmware version and so on. So we connected to MicroTIC device, but we don't see, uh, but we cannot see it in the neighbor list. The neighbor list is empty. Something wrong here. Are they really MicroTICs? So, here, we scan our network segment, 10.02.0 slash 24, using the Nmap utility, and we found five devices with MicroTIC router board MAC address. We built the IP MAC table according to our system, IRP table. The most interesting and suspicious thing here is that the gateway 10.0.2.1 is not responding by ping. Also, all ports are closed and the web interface is not available. Very important here. But the MAC address belongs to the Delink Corporation. Is it real Delink? Very uncommon case. Well, let's see. Let's try to scan all the IP address we have in our IP MAC list. We tried 10.0.2.118 first. That's probably one of which we are connected wirelessly according to its wireless MAC address. So we have no pings, no web fig, web interface not available, I mean, no inbox, all ports closed. 
Let's try other IP addresses of found devices. Same result. So these devices, they don't reply at all. But we see them, their IP addresses in ARP table, so they do at least a ARP reply. Let's double check the neighbor list from our MicroT QRT. Mm, this is the interface of the MicroT QRT to um, neighbor list. Nothing here, no neighbors. Something I don't know with the zeros MAC address. On the bridge one, so we bridged the interface and scanned the, on the on the bridge. We we couldn't find nothing. It's okay. This microtic devices any refuse connections if there are microtics. We only have our replies with mic microtic MAC address. Are they really microtics? MAC ping works. Did you know that you can ping your router board device? Very important, guys, if you are new to MicroTik. Did you know that uh, you can ping your router board device by MAC address if, even if they don't have an IP address? MAC ping server must be enabled in tools. Tools, MAC server, MAC ping server section. It's a very useful tool for debugging remote networks. This access point refused connection via IP address but replied to my MAC ping. A very good discovery. So I cannot use uh, my laptop to do MAC pings, but I can use the MicroTik QRT2, any router board device, to launch a MAC ping. So using our QRT2 machine, we discovered that we have another router board. Looks like the system administrator firewalled the access point from guest access. Well done, not bad. Did you know that you can also MAC telnet and MAC box to any router board device even if it has no IP address? This feature is configured via tools MAC server. MAC ping, MAC ping, MAC telnet and MAC box are, uh, are on by default on all interfaces. Please keep in mind that starting from Router OS version 6.41, this feature is on by default on LAN interface list. Yeah, it's good improvement. Let's try the MAC telnet. Uh, let's try the MAC telnet. We try the default. Yeah, we are. The system asks for login and password. We try the default admin login with different passwords, including a blank one, using the top la top 100 lazy admin passwords, and we ordered one more beer. Any guys from VNPT here? No? Okay. Eight minutes later. Who is using the same password for securing your network equipment? A very popular password, even in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Who is using this? Uh, show, uh, yeah, show me your hands. No, no. No, no, no. Okay, go change your password now. <laughs> Let's immediately change the admin password to make sure nobody else is able to connect to this router as device. What? We use this command to change the password to any random one, and it says not enough permission. Have you ever tried with the console changing some settings? I would say that's a very good security practice to rename the default admin password, not only in router OS. So let's gather some basic information about this router board. 
because we're already in the system. So you can read. We use the system rotor board print to see the hardware info. We printed the user list using the command user print to print the system user list, yeah. And we also printed the active user, uh, the uh, user active print uh, to show currently logged in users to be sure nobody else is logged in in the system at the same time with us. Because so much easy password. Okay, uh, let's see the rotor board model. It's um, metal. Who knows this? This is high power, very high power, waterproof, I would say very high power, waterproof uh, outdoor omnidirectional access point. Let's see its specification. 32 dBm, 3200 milliwatt. Antenna gain, the default antenna bundled antenna gain is 6 dBi. And it's uh, bundled with omnidirectional antenna. And this device uh, has only single chain. This is the only one disadvantage of this strong machine. So that's why we had a connection only with a single chain, if, if you remember. Can you see the default admin user is not in default full group, but the non-default test group. What else can we see? We found one more user. User Zabbix. Who knows? In a full group. Guys, who knows what is Zabbix? One, two, three, four. Well, okay. Okay, I explain in short. Zabbix is a very popular monitoring system to check the network health and performance. Probably the admin of this network is using the Zabbix monitoring system in his network. And maybe because of that he created user with full permission to have unlimited monitoring capabilities. Let's see. The bad thing is that we cannot log in with this user because we cannot read the system user password. Router OS protects user password. You cannot read it only change if you have enough permission. So let's see our test user group permissions. We printed user group via user group print command. We can see that the group test has very limited permission set. <coughs> we are not allowed to write changes. Write is disabled. We are not to change user and groups. This one is disabled. If I'm not mix mixing, I think this is. And we are not allowed to read sensitive information. And Lots of other web interface, sniffing, API, Roman, Dude, everything is with a with a sign is disabled. We only have this, 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 and this. And we see tests, so we can use test features of with this user permission. So yeah, we have permission to read configuration and we are also allowed to log in using Winbox. You see, I marked it. Yeah, and also we checked uh, using the common Mac uh, tool, Mac server, Mac Winbox print, and we see that Mac Winbox is enabled on all ports.
But why did not we see it from our neighbor's list? We didn't see it on Winbox. So on a Winbox, if you remember, we, s we scanned for neighbors and we didn't see any, uh, any neighbors. But the win Mac Winbox is still on. Let's continue to Winbox GUI. I don't like the console. I think you also. Do you know that you can connect to any router OS powered device from your Winbox app using MAC address? Even if there are no IP there is no IP address available or the router is firewalled. Show me your hands if you are using feature to configure IP uh, to co using this feature to configure IP address less routers. Anyone using Mac server? Only configure using IP addresses? And what's happened if you lose to change IP address or you want to re change remotely IP address or you make a mistake? Okay, I will explain you. I think you are new to this feature. Sometimes it's very useful if you lose IP connection to your router because of configuration mistakes. Most common are firewall and routing mistakes. For example, I have lost of for example, I have, I, have, I have lots of remote routers and most of them are more than 7,000 kilometers away from me. And because of Mark Winbox, I already saved a few thousand dollars for emergency flight tickets. So if you think that you can firewall your router because of that and because of that, then nobody can connect to your device, you are wrong. Router board is still accepting connections via Mac Winbox protocol by default. And that's very bad reason to use simple admin passwords. You can change the settings inside tool Mac server Mac Winbox section. And same tools Mac server Mac telnet sec section. Please know that starting from row, yeah. Yeah, I already told that. I re remember once again that now that's starting from Router S version uh, 6.41, the default configuration only accepts Mac Winbox connections from interface list, from interfaces listed on in LAN interface list. Is it clear, guys? Yeah, this is uh, actually the wrong screenshot. Um, this is. Uh, because I had to to build a new screenshot in last minute, and I did it wrong. But in reading in read-only mode, mm, these fields are gray. So we logged into rotor board via metal. Uh, so we logged into the rotor board metal access point via Mac Win box. Let's check wireless settings. And standard is not enabled. We can see it on the band. 2.2 gigahertz, B and G. Why don't they enable N? It's very, this device can work with the N standard. Another thing, country is not set. By default, the router board is coming without country set. I would say that since since 2018, a new all new rotor boards are coming with country lock. So um, you cannot you cannot change the country. If the rotor is in imported in Vietnam, you the, your rotor will be with a country lock to Vietnam, and you cannot change the country. And all uh, wireless regulated. Policies will be automatically applied to the wireless interface. For example, uh, the frequency range and maximum transmit power and so on. I would remind you that this um, microtick metal 
router board is very powerful machine. 32 dBA, dBi, dBm. Okay, <laughs> always mixing. Uh, and by default, if you if you don't set the, the the country set, it's working on a full power. And here you can see the frequency mode set to manual transmit power. And the next another slide uh, screen. 32 dBm, F working on the full power. And I'll try to explain a little bit. This is a very important thing. This device is screaming very loud. That's a very cool feature of this rotor board, of this metal rotor board. And that's why it's so much loved by lazy admins. It can cover very large distances if you select no country set and use maximum manual transmit power. Let me explain you some important theoretical thing. I know that the most that most of you guys always check the Wi-Fi coverage by watching the signal strength strength on your mobile phones. Who, are, who is using Android Wi-Fi analyzer to check Wi-Fi signal quality? Lots of you, okay. Very popular app, I also used that one when I had Android. <laughs> and also did wrong decisions. Now, after wireless certifications, I know better. I'll try to share this knowledge with you. Please always keep in mind that your phone only shows the strange of incoming signal. Of incoming signal. So, if you set your powerful rotor transmit power at 32 dBm, put your rotor on top of your restaurant and go 150 meters away from it, you will see very good signal on your phone screen. But you are wrong. Please go to the wireless router registration table and see how weak is the incoming signal strength from your gadget. You can boost the transmit power of your powerful access point but cannot boost the transmit power of your user gadget. Is it clear? No. Once again. I will read once again a very important thing. If you set your powerful rotor transmit power at 32 dBm, maximum power, and put the rotor on top of your restaurant or house or I don't know, and go far away, 150 meters away, From it, check the, the phone Wi-Fi analyzer and you see very good signal, maybe yellow or maybe even green. But the incoming signal from your weak Wi-Fi Android or iPhone or I don't know, gadget, is not so strong and signals are not equal incoming signal is strong and you can see high signal it's not a decision okay guys you see signal is good give me money I go to another customer stop because the signal coming your phone is not so strong as the signal coming into your phone a very important thing that's why it's a good idea to put more rotor board devices more frequent, you, for example, five small access points around the restaurant or around the area, instead of putting two metals on a high power. I'm not selling rotor boards now, I'm explaining you the theory. That's why the idea of using the metal rotor 
at its maximum transmit power is uh, to communicate with gadget is a very bad idea. Now you should understand why the micro the, why the metal why is the metal rotor board great companion for our QRT2 rotor board. They are both high power class. So let's check some advanced settings. WDS is not enabled, so this access point is not acting as a wireless repeater, but all of them are using same channel number one. So much interference. What is the idea of using same channel when you are not repeating another access point? Also, we can see here that hardware protection mode is disabled. Who knows what is hardware protection mode stands for and how it works? Who knows? Yeah, wireless certified engineers here. Yeah, it's from wireless engineering, micro course. Okay, I'll try to explain in short. <coughs> Imagine the airport. Two aircrafts can communicate with air traffic control tower but far away from each other to communicate directly. So, air traffic, con air traffic controller here, two aircraft coming from these areas. They cannot communicate. They can communicate to the traffic control, but they don't see each other. They are both going to approach and land the same airport at the same time. The air traffic control tower is able to communicate with both to coordinate them to avoid air collision by exchanging control information. Very important thing. Approaching aircraft sends the information like ready to land and waits for clear to land confirmation to start landing on the shared airfield. Wi-Fi devices sometimes cannot hear each other if located far away from each other. Wi-Fi devices, I mean gadgets, not access points. It leads to increased interference and heavy wireless retransmission rate. Hardware protection feature enables MicroTik rotor board to, evade, to avoid air traffic, air collision between uh, gadgets same as air traffic control tower. This example is well known as hidden node issue. So let's try to improve wireless settings to, to increase the wireless performance and reduce interference. But the thing is we cannot change rotor S settings without right permission. Okay, let's try to log in via Zabbix user and well-known password, admin123. Wrong password. Trying to reduce, trying to brute force the password using top 100 lazy password. Also failed. Wow, very smart. Let's go another way. Let's check, let's check for our neighbors. And what? We found three, three more rotor board metal devices and something else on VLAN 7 interface. Found one more rotor board model RB750BR2. The first one. All same firmware. But the MAC address is a little bit different, but also belongs to Microtik. So what is the VLAN 7? Any ideas why we didn't see these neighbors from our QR2 rotor, but we can see this rotor from our metal rotor? Is it complicated? <laughs> Because discovery was disabled on the main bridge segment, but it was only enabled on the VLAN 7 segment. 
you can see from this screen. The, the neighbor discovery was only enabled on VLAN 7 interface. Who knows anything about VLANs? VLANs? One, two, three, four. Okay. VLANs are used to separate different network broadcast segments over a single cable link. It's a very good practice to isolate management and user network into different segments and uh, use uh, different IP addresses, address space. Management network is used to access servers and routers for management. It's a good security practice to isolate management and user networks. So the router cannot be accessible, ac accessible via user network. And looks like we had. That's why we could not ping, we could not connect, and, and so on. So the, the user network was isolated via firewall. But we still can access. Normally, we can access from the management network. So the VLAN 7 is probably a management network. So let's see. So, this is how uh, our new network diagram looks like. We didn't see our metals inside the user segment because discovery was switched off. But we found all other metals, including our Hexpoe light rotor, inside another hidden VLAN segment. Hidden VLAN segment. So, what is RB750PR2? This is another rotor board device with four POE out ports. Should I explain anything about any, any benefits about POE technology? Who is using POE? Two, three? Yeah, I know, Tendas and Teppelinks, they don't have POE. Yeah, POE is the technology uh, to power router via Ethernet cable, so you don't need to deliver electricity to the router via 220 volt. You can power router from the central. So this router can, you see, ports with a yellow, POE out. This router can power another router via Ethernet cable. Very handy. So yeah, I'm not sure, but probably this router is acting as power source for that four metal rotors. Let's check it. Let's hug it. Try. McQueen box is not possible from our laptop because of different segment, but Please keep in mind that Mac Ping, Mac Win Box. Yeah. Please keep in mind uh, that mm, Mac Ping, Mac Win Box, and Mac Telnet are working only inside the same broadcast network segment. We have the shared VLAN 7 segment between our metal and hex spoiler light rotor. So let's try to Mac Telnet that hex spoiler rotor from our metal metal access point console. So we go to neighbor list, open the neighbor, and there is a button marked on it, and we immediately see the console so we can connect from the metal that we already winboxed in to another router, like bridging. We all know that most admins are so much lazy to set different passwords to their servers, routers, printer, printers, and so on. So let's try to connect using the same login and password that we have already found in our X, uh, metal access point. Here we go, we are in. 
admin at one two three. Let's take a look at the router setting by printing our export config. So yeah, you see we bypass firewall. We connected we are we have a chain connection from one router to another router only using only MAC addresses. No IP addresses here. Probably admin thinks that firewalling 100% router is secure. No need to create strong passwords to remember. Yeah. We print the configuration, the export configuration, and see this router is almost not configured. Completely empty configuration. The only three things here are all ports are joined into master port Ether 1 via switching chip. VLAN 7 is working on Ether 1 master port. I would say that it's a legacy feature. Master port starting from the router S. You see master port here? Starting is ability to use the switching chip to bypass the CPU. But starting from router S version 6.40. Or no, so sorry, port 41. In 40 it was still in experimental mode, didn't launch. And in since 41, uh, master, master port is now no, not, no need. It, the, the, uh, is the newer implementation of uh, the bridge is using switching chipset hardware afloat features. Okay, um, dis discovery disabled on Ethernet and other five from other one, so on all Ethernet ports. We know that this router has four, five Ethernet ports, 100 megabit, and all discovery feature, and neighbor discovery is discovery disabled on all ports. But you see the VLAN 7, is created on other one, but it's not listed here. It means it's on by default. So on VLAN 7, this router is discoverable via neighbors. That's why we could not discover the router board, this router board inside the VLAN, ah, inside uh, the Ethernet segment. The, the 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 user segment also yeah nothing else is configured firewall is empty you can see ip address is not set also because of that setting the because of no ip address firewall is useless right firewall is using is working only with ip addresses I'd like to remind everyone that on clean router board configuration, all MAC servers, MAC Telnet, one, MAC Winbox, and MAC, MAC Ping are enabled on all different interfaces by default. Ethernet, SFP, VLAN, wireless, EOIP, VPNs, and so on. So, I guess this device acts like a simple POE switch with a separate VLAN for management and nothing else. This is the idea of this router, acting like a switch. So, but smart switch enough to log in and to use full feature set of router OS. Let's print the neighbor list using IP neighbors print command. We can see four metals. We already know these all MAC addresses. On the VLAN 7 interface. Nothing new discovered. 
Same was as we had on the metal in the VLAN 7. So let's try to do enable discovery on Ethernet 1 to Ethernet 5 interfaces. Also nothing new discovered. So yeah, this router board is an empty POE switch. Let's check for something else before we quit this machine. Let's check for some backups. I know that most admin guys don't take care, don't take backup protection seriously because they always keep them in easy and lazy access for emergency cases to reduce the downtime while the system is being restored from backups. So yeah, let's print the file list. Ha! Huh. That's what I already said. Check your router boards also, guys. Do you have same? Maybe. Mine also, sometimes. I'm not ideal. This router's flash storage contains some backup files and also a few RSC files. We can try to restore this router from any backup file to gather extra information about the network configuration, but there is a chance to lose connection via MacTelnet after reboot if Mac server is disabled and VLAN 7 is not configured in that old backup. So better download that backups and try to restore them to another router board. And Zabbix, by the way. There are also some RSC files that can contain some useful information. Any ideas how to download files via Mac Telnet console? We have these files, but we are not in the Linux console. We cannot print this file. We only can download, but we are connected Mac, Mac, Mac Winbox to Mac Telnet. How to download? We, are, we don't have any Winbox direct connection. It's a different network segment, and we have no IP address configured. Any ideas? How would you do that? Winbox, but we are on a different segment. And this, this machine has no IP address. And we cannot Mac Winbox because it's a VLAN 7 segment. We cannot access, we cannot jump to another segment. But this is different segment. You can only connect to the same segment device. I cannot connect from my laptop because it's two different networks. It's a different VLAN. I cannot win box. I cannot mark win box to this machine. Okay, okay, I will explain, I will explain. There are actually two, two ways to gather these files. The one way is uh, to bridge VLAN 7 and uh, our main bridge segment, to bridge them together, and then we, we will be on the same network, and after that we can try to access using Mac Inbox. But if you remember the network layout, we can, uh, on the, on the main bridge, there is a working DHCP server when we're on the same, so we can try to... Yeah, we can try to... Um, we have no IP address, I remind. Uh, we can try to put this POE switch to internet to get the IP address from the gateway and send email 
That's the easiest solution, eh? Hey guys, do your 60 USD poor switch can send emails? No? The IP address is empty, but it's no problem. You see? I print the IP address? No. From previous configuration, you should remember that, but it's not a big issue. The router S can do everything. Any magic? So, let's add the DHCP client on Ethernet 1 interface with a single, po with a single comment. IP DHCP client, client add the interface add. So we add the DHCP client to the interface Ether1, disabled no, because if you don't put disable no, it will be default, uh, disabled by default for safety. And then we print and we see, one, we, we print the DHCP client status and we see that on interface one, status bound is using, using as default gateway by default if we don't put any extra and we got the IP address. Yes. <coughs> so yeah, only 10 seconds to become online. Very handy with only one comment. So we can send all files via RotorOS email to available on every RotorOS de device. So I'd like to remind you that we are still sitting in front of our laptop to our QRT2 high power directional antenna. Laptop antenna, four kilometer target distance and enabling internet access for the hex square router from the MacTelnet console inside the router board MacWin box session very complicated, right? I'd al I also would like to remind that Mama is still waiting for my Skype call. So yeah, backup files came, but they are encrypted. Did you know that RotorOS does encryption of backups by default using the current system user password? Who knows? Nobody knows? Who is using Rotor S backups? Nobody? Nobody is backing up system? Okay. So let's try to restore the password using the known uh, password, admin at one, two, three, and we failed. Brute forcing backup password also failed. Maybe that the uh, maybe that the backup maybe that the backup for some previous router configuration. I don't know. Okay, let's print both RSC files we had. There was one dot RSC and Zabbix RSC. Zabbix is something interesting. Can you read this RSC script? Can you understand what's going on here? Hands? Yes. Looks like I have to comment this section because, yeah, <laughs> looks like nobody understands what's going on, but Zabbix RSC file contains the router OS script for adding new user Zabbix with strong random generated password stored as plain text. It's very hard to brute force this kind of password, but easy to read from an encrypted plain text file. File that was securely stored inside flash memory on a hidden and unhackable router without any IP address with a lazy admin password. 
Guys, remember that security by obscurity is not a security. Let's check if this route, if this password and network admin, if this password, if this password, the network administrator is using for his email and social media access. No, I'm joking. We will not try to hack his email. Then don't do that. <laughs> Let's try to connect to our metal via Macwin box using Zabbix and found password. So we are back to our metal that we had connect we had connection on the first time without uh, permission. You remember that Zabbix has full full access? Yeah, we got the full access to the metal. Mama, please wait for more few minutes, please. Our four metal access point had the same password for Zabbix user, quite obvious, quite obvious for me for now. So, let's improve wireless setting on all access points to boost the network performance and reduce interference and air collisions as I already explained you before. Time to order more beer. <laughs> Before I forgot, let me remind you that we detected five rotor board devices while scanning the air using our powerful QRT2 rotor board. And probably that one is also misconfigured, same as our four metals that we have already improved. Before making any Skype call, I need to sure that all devices with same SSID are sharing the airtime properly. The problem is that I couldn't detect the, that device inside VLAN network. It's only available via wireless scanner. And another problem is the signal strength minus Nine, minus 94 dBm is very weak. Even with a powerful QRT2 router board, I am not able to establish stable, a stable link, any stable link. The, connect the connection always drops. Okay, I have a good idea. Let me show you one cool trick that you can you, they, let me show you one cool trick that you will never do with other wireless network equipment brands. Ready? Go. Let's scan the air via wireless interface on one of our metal rotors according to the next diagram. Sounds complicated? Like this. So we have established wireless link between our QRT and the nearest metal. We are on the same segment. But we can use the wireless interface of another access point around. So we have a Macwin box access from our laptop to this machine and you, we can control this access point wireless behavior. Um, they should, they sh because there is a four kilometer and these devices a little bit can be far away because the signal was very weak but we, the, the signal is very strong here this is the wired connection and this access point should be not so far away from others. Maybe 100, 200 meters, I don't know, according to signal strength. So the signal should be much stronger, obviously. So what we see here, 
we scan the air you know the feature you can scan the air uh, using so we already found seven access points with the same SSID same firmware and say similar MAC addresses all rotor boards same SSID same channel <laughs> And is not enabled. Some other access point, I don't know. Different signal. And all same firmware. Probably all metals. I don't know. So you see the signal. They are very close to each other. So the connection should be very stable between. That is what we discovered. Four more rotor boards on air, but none of them were discoverable inside the management VLAN segment. What a quiz, guys. Mama is still waiting for our Skype call. OK, let me show you one of my favorite wireless tricks. Let's shut down one of access point and use it as wireless station to connect to the target access point wirelessly to build a wireless bridge between two router boards. I'd like to remind you that we are still using, in f we are still sitting in front of our laptop to our QRT2 high power directional antenna from the four kilometer from the target area and building wireless bridge to one of remote rotor boards without having direct wireless access. Unbelievable, right? <laughs> we also disable the we also disable default authentication on uh, on the station bridge interface because this is disabled. I should explain why we did that. Yeah, we are in uh, we are in, um, in a connect list. You can define the policy to which devices we to connect. So we want to define the exact MAC address of the access point we want to establish the wire link link with. By default, router board will establish the link with the nearest available access point according to the signal strength. But we want to establish two exact MAC address. We already had that MAC address before. Here. Or here. So, this, ro this station this wireless access point is not a wireless access point anymore. It's uh, the wireless interface is trying not to accept incoming connection, but to connect to other access point. And but there are lots of different access points with the same SSID and the same password. But we want to connect to exact access point on the other the, the, the other device. We can we we don't have a, a wireless direct connection. So kind of wireless proxification connection. So here is the MAC address and the put marked connect because by default router will not connect because we disabled the default authentication. It's from the MTCNA course, the basic one. And yeah, we have a established connection. So you see registration table, you see the signal strength minus 52 by minus 43 uptime is running that's how we got the remote wireless access to wireless inaccessible wire access point yes we used the wireless interface to become station instead of access point yes we had to kick some other connected customers sorry guys there are some other access points available around. Hey, look. 
we have a double wireless bridge now. One, two. So we got access from our laptop to this machine and there are no cables here. Only wireless, we don't have any cable connectivity. This is the trick. <coughs> Trying to use, uh, to connect uh, with the user Zabbix with the same password. We are on the system, obviously. Let's print the IP address and take a look. This is different IP address space and probably it's a different network segment. So yeah. We scan the another network segment. So this is seg segment with this IP address list, IP address zone. This, sta this device is acting as a station and you see IP address and there is somewhere a gateway 10.0.2.68 uh, one somewhere and probably and we have a wireless link to this machine and this is acting as a access point bridge so we can bridge together and got the access to this segment from our laptop. Yes, and also we compared MAC addresses. Um, of both gateways and we discovered the brand new the link router model. Ready? Can you see that? The link MAC address? The link MAC address. Security by obscurity. Because here, the MAC address was the microtik one inside the VLAN, but for user devices who want to hack the network, they try, the young hackers, they first try to find out what kind of devices using in the network, because these devices had no IP address, not discoverable, you cannot connect from your laptop to this device from the user network. This router is protected, Uh, firewall 100% and if you want to check maybe the router board, uh, the, the, the gateway, what kind of MAC address has, you see the link, you want to hide your, for example, you, hi you want to hide your MicroTik router, you change the MAC address on the interface and kind of hiding information. So yeah, let's summarize what did we do. So we got access, yeah, our same uh, Zabbix login and password we got inside this MicroTik router, so we got a full access to the network, so we had access to all these devices. Now we cannot disable this wireless bridge and can access this network using this router, bridging here, routing or any way. So we have a full access to this network. <coughs> um, so we need to, the idea was to, not to hack this network, the idea was to Skype Mama. <laughs> uh, so what we did, we, the idea is we have a wireless uh, engineering certificate and we know how to build a stable, good network. So we, what we did? First of all, we launched the Capsman. Who knows what's Capsman? Anyone knows Capsman? 
one. And that's all. Okay, the guy who should be before me should explain what is it, the Capsman. The Capsman is microtech technology, very useful to build the Wi-Fi roaming system. So for smooth roaming trans tra transitions, it's very handy when you, for example, a big hotel, and you know, uh, and your devices is traveling across different access point and change and reconnecting automatically to another nearest access point without losing connection. So it's 100% uh, smooth Wi-Fi roaming system. And so you can sky walk around territory and make a phone call, see Skype any, and your connection will not be interrupted. And because I see everywhere in Vietnam, especially in Muy Ne, where I live, uh, the, the most common uh, admin, they hotel, hotel Wi-Fi 1, hotel Wi-Fi 2, hotel Wi-Fi 3. For example, in Muine, I already finished the Dong Dongvui food court, and there were Wi-Fi 1, Wi-Fi 2, Wi-Fi 3, and every time I, I'm connected to Wi-Fi 1, I'm traveling to another access point, but my device is not reconnecting to the nearest one, it's still trying to catch the connection to the old one. And if I, my, yeah, I don't know, need to explain. So when you set up the proper wireless uh, roaming, your phone decides itself because all network uh, SSID are same. You don't need to, um, your phone decides to connect itself to the nearest available access point. And the, the most Im uh, important thing is your TCP or UDP connection are not interrupted. It's very important for real-time streaming, for example. You don't lose the IP address. Okay, so we launched the Capsman. Uh, then uh, joining all wireless interface to the Capsman. So we launched Capsman here is the wireless roaming controller. We connect all access point wireless interfaces to this main router. Um, yeah, we, s we, we set up separate channels, so now they are not working on the channel one, channel one, channel one, channel one, like it was before. So channel one, channel six, channel 11, non, 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 uh, all channels are not interfering each other, so yeah, we had to come to that restaurant to identify which access points were located by the signal strength. Yes, <coughs> so we set up properly um, wireless channels, so we enable hardware protection to avoid uh, collision and hidden node uh, issues. So we reduce also the wireless transmit power. So these devices are not shouting uh, by default at 32. Uh, and also we, um, we enable N standard. And finally we got the bandwidth between our QRT and uh, the, this router. And so connected, uh, we got very stable bandwidth, more than 34 megabits between the, yeah, the QRT and this rotor using the bandwidth test to utility. So we checked the speed test uh, uh, and uh, the speed test performance was much more better, but still not, not so perfect. And let's play with a PCQ quiz. Somebody is using PC uh, Quiz on Rotor OS? Anyone using Quiz? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, Rotor OS can, uh, can divide traffic and make prioritization between different type of traffic, devices. So we use simple queues to split traffic so for example, okay, I'll explain you in a short what is a 
PCQ, um, PCQ quying, simple PCQ quying. So imagine that I'm the user who is, who is trying to download heavy torrent files from internet and there are other devices connected wirelessly or via cable, doesn't matter and also trying to get the internet access to load Facebook or something else and I'm the guy who is trying to download torrents. And if the, the, the prioritization and quieting is not enabled, I will take the maximum bandwidth and all other guys will have issues with the even loading a page, scalping and so on because the router is not control. Uh, the router is not controlling the traffic. Everybody is like a big traffic jam on the street, when e no traffic light, and everybody is trying to be the first. <coughs> so yeah, we set up a simple PCQ quiz to split traffic across all connected devices. Across all connected devices. So for example. I will just give you a very simple example. If there are three guys connected to the networking trying to download torrents and we have a total, for example, 60 megabit of the bandwidth, three of guy, each of guy will have 20 megabit. And if one guy is stopped downloading heavy traffic, we have, both guys have 30 megabit each. If so, and so on. And if I'm on the only one who is trying to download, I will have 60 megabit. And as soon as 10 other guys is joining and trying to download Facebook page or something like that, they will have their stable speed. Because the, the, the cool feature of quieting the very strong that is available even on the router, the $20 router, is inside your bags, even that rotor can, can do quieting. $20 rotor. I already saved lots of guest houses in Muine because of all of my Russian friends. They always complain to me, hey Nikita, please, can you do something? We have a guest house with 20, house, uh, 20 rooms and we constantly have internet connection issues and I bring them $20 device, put it in the network between the Jipon modem and their the links or Tepa links or Tendas, I don't know, and set up PCQ in two minutes. And these guys have smooth Wi Fi connection, and not, not Wi Fi, internet connection, without any issues. It's a very, very cheap and cool feature. The reason to use Router OS. Router boards. Okay, so finally we have a very stable internet connection and now we can do a Skype call to Mama. Thanks for watching. Well, um, thank you very much, Nikit, for a very detailed uh, presentation. If you want, you can make a picture, but the presentation will be available on the MicroTIC user meeting website. You can contact me easily anytime. I can respond to you. I do consulting for free. My Telegram is my favorite messenger. Don't use WhatsApp. Sorry. No constant SIM card. At Facebook, email, Instagram, always online. You can ask me. Do I am available a, online. Do you have uh, questions? Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, if you have uh, questions, you can ask me privately. I can send you the presentation or you can download and then if you have some unclear moments I can explain you details because lots of complicated things require some knowledge, deep knowledge of Microsoft Rotor S.
Okay. I'm always online. Feel free to contact me anytime. Thank you. See you. Okay, thank you. Uh